Well, I'm coming to you today, and I'm going to come to you today and, and speak on the mind to have. So otherwise, what I'm saying is I'm going to speak on what type of mind to have. But in Philippians 2, 5, it said, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So therefore, if the mind to have is to have the mind of Christ, that's the mind to have, to have the mind of Christ. And in the mind of Christ, you will find obedience in the mind of Christ. You will find faithfulness in the mind of Christ. But you know, back down there in Matthew 4, 11, 4, in Matthew 4, 1 through 11, when Jesus was tempted by Satan, the mind of Christ was that he used God's word. He used God's word against Satan. Attack. That's the mind of Christ. So, when we are attacked by Satan, in order to have the mind of Christ, to do what Christ did, we will use God's words to, uh, to attack Satan with, to defend ourselves with, because through God's word is power. And through God's word is power, so that's how we will attack. And then also the mind of God which is in Matthew 6, 33, is, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Okay. So that's what God, that's what Jesus did. He sucked the kingdom of God. He went to God constantly in prayer, consistently in prayer. He looked for God, the power of God, the glory of God. That's what Jesus did. And that is having the mind of Christ. When you find yourself in a situation and you don't know how to get out of it and you don't know what to do, what you do, you seek the kingdom of God. You seek the kingdom of God because in the kingdom of God lies the power of God. How do you seek the kingdom of God? You seek the kingdom of God through prayer through fasting, for giving thanks to him, giving him glory, giving him honor. That's the kingdom of God. You go, you look for the things that's up above. You look for the things that are spiritual and righteousness in the Father. That's the kingdom of God. And then he said, in his righteousness. So that means when we're talking about the righteousness of God, now we're talking about the principles of God. We're talking about the spiritual principles that God has designed for us to live by. And, then, and we must live by them principles. We must live in love. For he said, love the Lord our God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with thy mind. And love thy neighbor as thyself. You know? And love harms no one. So we must live off the principle of love. That's where the righteousness of God has come out. Because when you live in love, and then you're going to give mercy. <laughs> Just like Jesus Christ. That's the mind of Christ. The mind I have is the mind of Christ. And then you're going to give mercy. You're going to give kindness. You're going to be humble. You ain't going to be prideful. You ain't going to be self-seeking. You're going to be interested in looking out for the interests of others. That's the mind of Christ. You remember when Christ walked on earth. What did he come to do? He came to heal the sick, to heal the blind, to show mercy and grace and kindness to others. And that's what Christ demonstrated. And that is the mind of Christ. And that is the same mind that we should have. We should be looking out for others like Christ was looking out for others. When the people got hungry, he fed them when they was out there with him. And that's the mind of Christ, the interest of others. He was a self-seeking. He was seeking his Father's will. He was doing his Father's will. And in the process of doing his Father's will, he was looking out for our welfare. He kept himself out, even from up high and even down low. That was the mind of Christ. To please the Father that he may please others. That was the mind of Christ. So, that's the mind to have, is the mind of Christ, is the mind of Christ. And then the mind of Christ, you have to understand, deal with a lot of faith. The mind of Christ had faith in his Father. The mind of Christ relied on his Father. The mind of Christ trusted in his Father. The mind of Christ had confidence of his Father. And that's the mind to have. 
That's the mind to have, the mind of Christ. Understand how the mind of Christ operated. It was all about his father. It was all about us. How to bring us, how to get us restored to the father. That was the mind of Christ. So us, as individuals, well, our minds should be like the mind of Christ. We should be saying how we could bring others to the kingdom of God, to the Father, to restore them, to reconcile them to the Father. That is the mind of Christ. And that's the mind that we should have. We should have the mind of Christ. So you understand where I'm coming from, right, about the mind of Christ. The mercy, the love, the kindness, the peace, not, not looking out for his own, you understand, not being prideful, you know, he's a very meek man, and we should have a meek mind because that's the mind of Christ. The faith in his father, that his father going to do what his father going to do. He trusts his father in everything he do. He even went on to say, he even went on to say, um, the thing that's probably going to do. He said, if you see me, you have seen the Father because of the works that I do. So, the mind of Christ was what? To do the works of the Father. The mind of Christ is to do the work of his Father. And that's what our mind should be. The mind to have is the mind of Christ, and that's to do the works of the Father. That's to do the will of the Father. That's the type of mind that we're supposed to have if we got the mind of Christ. That's the type of mind we should have. We want to fulfill the will of the Father in our daily life, and our daily living. And the works of the Father is what? To walk in love. Not to be kindly minded, which is to be sinful minded. Not to live by our sinful nature, but to live by the mind of Christ, by the Holy Spirit that's in you. And if you got the Holy Spirit in you, you have the mind of Christ in you. And you need to let the Holy Spirit lead you, which is the mind of Christ. So that's the way that we must operate out of the mind of Christ that's in us through the Holy Spirit. So, you know, we have to do the works of God always and always do the work of God. And if you look at Christ, there's another thing about the mind of Christ. It wasn't doubtful. Christ did not doubt his Father. Christ had no doubt. Period. So, if you're going to have the mind of Christ, you cannot have a mind of doubt. You got to eliminate doubt and let your faith just grow. And then you want to have the mind of Christ, you need to read Philippians 4.8. Because it tells you the things that you should meditate on. The things that you should think on. One of them was good works. Truth. Noble. These are the things that he wants us to think on. He wants us to think on the things that are righteous. He wants us to meditate on them things that are righteous. And he wants us to apply them in our life. That's the mind to have. And guess what? That is the mind of Christ. So, with all that, we have to put it all together and walk in the mind of Christ. There's no way around it. There's no way around it if you want to be a true truthfully growing mature Christian and the child of God do you understand Jesus is the son of God and what Jesus did he made it for us so that we can be children of God so today we are children of God and if we are children of God that means we should have the mind of God, and in order to have the mind of God, we got to retain the mind of Christ. And the only way that we can maintain the mind of Christ is through prayer, so he can speak to us. Through meditation on the word, so we can rely on us. Through meditating on the word, after you read the word, so that it can become in our mind.
And then once we get it in our mind, it is established there. It stays there, and it becomes a part of us. What you say, let's say like this right here. It becomes your second nature. Matter of fact, no, 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 no. I said that back. It becomes your first nature. So when you act, you act according to the mind of Christ. Therefore, Christ is going to be revealed to you. As Christ told them, he said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Because the things that I do come from the Father. And that's the same way it would be with you if you got the mind of Christ. We should be able to say, if you have seen me, you have seen Christ, because the things that I do come from Christ, and I reveal them out to you. That's what happens when you have the mind of Christ. So when you have the mind of Christ, love is going to be displayed in your life, in your everyday life. Honesty is going to be displayed in your everyday life. Trustworthiness is going to be played, displayed in your everyday life. Faithfulness is going to be displayed in your everyday life. It's going to be revealed. It's going to be seen. It's going to come out when you got the mind of Christ, the mind of Christ, Christ is going to come out of you. And if Christ is not coming out of you, then you may not have the mind of Christ. So you need to work on developing the mind of Christ. Because once you get the mind of Christ into you, it becomes your heart. And then your heart is your desires. And with your desires comes your character and with your character produce your actions and your actions will line up with what the mind of Christ that's what you will reveal in your everyday life you will re represent peace you will reveal peace you will reveal joy because you have the mind of Christ in you now and it only comes to what mind do you have but the mind that you must have, you must have the mind of Christ. And then I was thinking about something. I was thinking about the mind. And, you know, it's, like, it's similar to the Godhead, you know. So, so, you know, the Godhead, we got the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Makes up the Godhead who work as one. <laughs> but now we're talking about the inner man. And in the inner man, we got the mind, the heart, and the spirit which make up the inner man who work as one as also. So therefore, what I'm trying to get at, you can't separate the mind, the heart, and the spirit. The three are one. The three are one. And when they are connected properly, the three work as one. You see? So if you get the mind, the heart, and the spirit to work as one, and then you are complete. Just like the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As you, have, if you really understand the Godhead, it works as one. That's why it's called the Godhead. And with our inner man, we need to have that same harmony through the power of the Holy Spirit that dwells in us. That the mind, the spirit, and the heart work as one, but in order to make it work as one towards God, we got to work on being like Christ. We got to work on having the mind of Christ. You know, just like a mechanic. When a mechanic want to become a mechanic, he got to study to be a mechanic. He got to think like a mechanic. He got to act like a mechanic. He get it down in him as a mechanic. And what's come out of him is a mechanic. And that's the same way it is with Christ. It's the same exact thing. Once you study the Word of God, you pray to God, you live a Christian life, you have the mind of Christ. And when you get the mind of Christ, what should come out of you is Christ. That's what should be revealed in your everyday life. Christ, since you got the mind of Christ. You know, so that's what should be revealed from you. 
See, it's like when it comes to God, you got to think like God. And the only way you can think like God, you got to be connected to God. In, in order to be connected to God, you got to ask him as your Savior. you got to say Jesus. you got to bring Jesus into your life. So what I'm trying to say now, for you that do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior, today is a good day to bring Christ into your life so Christ can be a part of your life, so Christ can rule in your life. And guess what? And when you bring Christ in your life and you study his word, and then you can have the mind of Christ also. Because it said, let that mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So today, um, you that do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior, today is a good day to make him your Lord. Today is the good day to make him your Lord. So I say, come to Christ. Get your life right. It's only through Christ. Come to Christ today and get your life right. So that you can think like God. So that you can think like God. So that you can have a better life than the life you now live. Because this godly life that I live with Jesus Christ, <laughs> let me tell you something. It's all good. It's all good. There's nothing bad about it. I just I didn't have no little tribulations here and there, but they don't compare to what I used to have. But the way that I handle them now, I handle them with Christ. I handle them with love. I handle them with kindness. It's all about Christ. It's all about Christ. So, what type of mind do you have? I hope you get the mind of Christ. And a day is a good day that you that do not know Christ to come to Christ and let Christ be the ruler in your life. Let Christ be the ruler in your life. This is a good day to let that happen. I want you all to know that I love you. All of you that take time out to watch these videos that I do, I'm grateful and I'm thankful. I hope that they're helping you in your Christian walk. I ask you to constantly to pray for me, that I may do what God wants me to do continuously, that I may be able to pass his word on and help the others, that I may give them light and to enlighten them to the word of God, that they may come to know in Christ and they may receive and have the mind of Christ. And at the end, what we will all gather eternal life and be with the Father in heaven. That's all I ask of y'all. So y'all have a nice day and let God bless you continuously.